Let's just stop things right there. Welcome to the second part of my OpenPilot versus Toyota TSS2 comparison video. This one we will focus mainly on the longitudinal control and I've went out and done some more direct comparisons like for stopped cars which is what you see here and later on in the video you will find out exactly what happens when you're using the factory system and you come up on a stop stopped car and when you're using open pilot system and come up on a stopped car so watch the end of the video if you want to see exactly what's different between these two systems and hopefully this will give you a good idea of exactly why open pilot is so much better than the factory system so here I'm using Toyota TSS2 on some urban roads uh, with lots of stoplights going through lots of intersections um, and when you have a lead car in front of you it's not bad it actually will do a lead car follow and it won't you know complain when you go through intersections it won't complain when the lane lines maybe aren't that great it will rely on that lead car but here you see the lead car pulls out and right here it beeps at me uh, telling me it's disengaging because I drove through an intersection which is really annoying if you don't have a lead car and you're driving through city streets and there's lots of intersections it will just constantly beep at you every time it drops lane lines whether it's one lane line or it's both every intersection it beeps at you and that gets old really quick you want a system that stays engaged uh, the factory system basically only relies on lane lines it does not use a vision model like open pilot open pilot is actually you know using vision to see what's in front of you so it understands what an intersection is it understands that the path obviously keeps going straight um, it's using cues in the environment to to carry you through those intersections without you know disrupting the experience um, so here is another complaint you basically have to hit resume every three seconds when you come to a complete stop behind a stop car as you see me doing because it uh, stops itself I don't know I guess it's a safety thing that they implemented so you have to hit resume and then here's yet another problem it's so slow to accelerate behind cars even when you set it to the closest distance setting it's not much better it feels so slow compared to open pilot and right after this you see the the lead car just takes off plenty of room for people to cut in front of you people behind you are annoyed um, so you can hit the accelerator and just catch up and it won't disengage but you know what's really the point if I'm constantly accelerating I like a system that can understand how to accelerate. So here's OpenPilot, um, an example of it behind a stopped car taking off. First of all, it, I don't have to hit resume. It stays engaged while I'm stopped and knows to continue. So you see here, it gives a little bit of a gap, but much, much better. Doesn't disengage through the intersection, keeps pace with the lead car, and you know you don't have to hit the accelerator if you hit the accelerator of open pilot it disengages the system so they are designing it in a way where you don't need to hit the accelerator which you know overall makes sense so now I want to talk to you a little bit about how the radar systems work the factory system has a rudimentary camera and a forward-facing radar and it's only looking straight ahead at the object that's exactly in front of you it's not looking at the cars around you, it's not looking at anything else in the scene, just what's in front of you. And more importantly, it mostly relies on dynamic objects, meaning the vehicle has to be moving at some speed for it to reliably pick it up at a you know, further distance. The reason for this is they don't want false positives. The systems are very basic and they can't tell the difference between a overhead sign, a trash bag, a metal plate in the road, and a car. So they've developed them biased towards uh, not picking up false positives. So if there is a car stopped and it's not moving, the system does not do a very good job of picking those up. Actually, it won't pick up a stopped car until you're basically too close to it, which you'll see an example of that later on. 
Um, with OpenPilot, it's using a vision model that has uh, been trained by millions of miles of driving data, and it actually understands that that's a car. It sees the cars in the scene. Right now, the system's very uh, limited. It's only focused on the car that's directly in front of you, and it's using the vision first, and then the radar as a backup. So it sees the car with the vision system, and then uses the radar to verify that, yes, that is an object, and that is a car. And the vision model helps with things like what you see here, a uh, cut-in. It can detect that a little bit earlier and know to slow down, so it's backing off here. And it usually lets cars cut in pretty smoothly and doesn't bother, uh, bother you too much and handles merging very well. But both systems have a fault where if a car in front of you pulls out very quickly and there's a stopped car right in front of it, they won't see that car. Because unlike humans, they're not looking ahead and seeing that there's a line of traffic. Um, this is the view that these systems have. Basically, right now, it's just a single car in front of you that's picked up by the model. And then you have the lane lines. And then in open pilot's case, you have the model view, which it can see more cars around you, but right now the system is only focused on what's exactly in front of you. So hopefully in the future, this system will be able to uh, see the traffic and know that it's in a traffic jam and respond accordingly. So here's an example of the Toyota system and how limited its view of the road ahead of it is. Here's just a slight turn, the system's turned on, and it just beeps at you. It doesn't even attempt to make the turn, it just knows it crossed the lane line. Now on top of that, right here, you see that you always need to be vigilant in paying attention because the system can't compensate for idiots on the road. And here, just to show you, it's open pilot in that exact same turn. Um, I went back and did it again, and of course, no problem, because it's using the model view to actually see that there's a turn ahead and know how to react to that appropriately. So now we're on to some of the just things that don't work with the factory system. Um, here I'm behind a uh, ambulance fire truck. And it stopped the first time, but here as I come up and stop again, you can actually hear it. Fire alarm goes off, um, and it just says that the radar cruise control is unavailable, and you have to take over. Um, so I re-engage the system, and I'm like, okay, here's even an example of it going off, and you can see uh, in front of other vehicles. This happened to me four or five times in just the short amount of time I tested it. And I don't understand. I don't know what the reason is. I don't know if it just doesn't get a good signal or it just doesn't even understand that that's a vehicle in front of it. It's confused. Like we're sitting here and it decides that that's not a car anymore and so it gets a false positive or thinks it has a false positive and just alarms out. I'm not really sure why it does this, but it happened more often than I would have liked in stop and go traffic. Like I said, uh, four or five times in just you know a day, basically, of using it. And here you see again, same thing happens. And it's pretty annoying to have an alarm just going off in your car for no reason. All right, and here, we talk about stopped cars. This is a real world example of the stopped car problem. There's traffic like a light ahead. There's a car up there completely stopped. And it complains about the lane lines, but the radar is still engaged. And it starts beeping at me. So it understands that it needs to brake. It just doesn't brake. You have to hit the brakes there. It wasn't going to stop, so I took over. Um, and that is not very confidence inspiring. You want a system that works, not one that just tells you, hey, I'm not working. 
And after watching these clips, I've come to realize that I think the brake alarm that comes on when you're approaching a stopped car is solely triggered by the radar seeing you closing in rapidly on a, you know, stopped object. But it it's not assuming it's a car. It doesn't know for sure. I don't think it can detect that it's a car at all. I think the only time it really knows that there's a vehicle in front of you is when the vehicle's, you know, dynamically moving. And then I guess it remembers when the vehicle stops or it uses the vision system at some extent when it's stopped. And that might be also why it drops out a lot when you're set behind stop traffic because it can't really detect a car, you know, visually. It's mainly just relying on the radar. Um, so yeah, that brake alarm is just there to alert the driver. So here's a controlled test. I went and found a stopped car on the side of the road. And this is the factory system. And we're going to see if it stops. And of course, no. No chance. So now we switch to open pilot. An open pilot will send through that factory uh, brake alarm signal, uh, but open pilot is detecting the vehicle here. As you can see, open pilot sees it with the vision system and stops. So I hope that gives you a better idea of how these systems are different. Um, and in the future, open pilot will be even better at longitudinal than it is now. OpenPilot gets updated constantly. Your factory system is the way it comes from the factory and that's it. Unless there is a huge issue that is affecting every car, these manufacturers are not going to update. You know, Tesla updates their system over the air. Kama AI updates their system over the air. None of these other manufacturers are doing that. So what you get in the car when you buy it is what you get for the life of the car. So when you look at that and you see that Open Pilot is getting, you know, updates and improvements, um, you know, once or twice a month, you can see the huge value add you get with Open Pilot versus the factory system. I mean, Open Pilot eventually could have a model-based longitudinal, meaning that it is using the environment to judge speed, it's using the other cars around you to gauge you know, what's going on. It could potentially you know, tell the difference between heavy traffic and you know, light traffic and react accordingly. You, know, you drive differently when you know the cars in front of you are just accelerating for a little bit and about to stop again because they're in a line of traffic than you would if you were leaving a stoplight. And you want a system that understands that an open pilot with machine learning has the ability to do that, which is one of the really exciting things and things that I'm looking forward to in future updates. So if you like this video, leave a comment down below letting me know some other uh, things you'd like to see with open pilot, and I may make some other videos in the future based off your suggestions. And if you want to learn more, uh, Kama AI has a website, it's comma.ai. There's also a Discord at discord.comma.ai. Um, both of those places are great resources for information. Um, the community is pretty active on the Discord. The devs are pretty active on the Discord. If you're interested in learning more or finding out if your car is compatible, uh, check out either of those. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one.